G'day folks, Scott here. Today I'm reviewing Pacific Rim Uprising. This is obviously the sequel to Pacific Rim, a movie made by Guillermo del Toro, one of my favourite filmmakers. But across his body of work, it was his worst by far. It's an entertaining, you know, monsters versus robots romp. Um, and I did enjoy it when it came out, but the very soap opera, dramatic, cheesy writing, acting, and some really, really terrible performances of some of the actors in that movie made it pretty hard to give it much more than I enjoyed sitting through the special effects film. And to be honest, this is no different. If you like the first movie, you're going to like this one. Um, it's, you know, just as well made as far as visual effects. It's probably a step forward as far as visual effects are concerned. So I guess we'll go with the good first. This movie stars John Boyega, who you know as Finn from the episode 7 and the episode 8 of the Star Wars films. He was much better in this for me than he is in Star Wars. I thought this role suited his range as an actor and his personality a lot more than Finn does. Uh, his character is the son of Idris Elba, who was like the leader of the Jaeger program in the first movie. And it's well he's well cast for that role. He's, he's fitting in it. I found him, you know, pretty funny, entertaining. He, his range, like I said, worked very well within this role. Uh, next would be the special effects. Uh, just like in the first one, these special effects are exemplary. I rate this and the first movie above any of the Michael Bay made Transformer movies, simply because for something with giant robots and huge amounts of action and special effects all going on at the same time, Michael Bay's movies, as I've said in my previous review for one of his films, is so busy and so frantic that you cannot follow the choreography in the action and have the slightest idea of what is going on in certain scenes. Pacific Rim and Pacific Rim Ups, Uprising didn't have that issue. I found this very easy to watch, very easy to follow, and the action scenes were fun. They were really well done, they were great. As far as, you know, the first movie versus this one goes, this has some different Jaegers in there, had some different monsters in there, had some different elements of the story that weren't there. As always, I don't watch trailers. I didn't know anything about this going into it. The trailers ruined pretty much everything. So a lot of the elements in there that I was surprised by in the film were actually shown in the trailers. So for you, it might not be much of a surprise. Uh, and then obviously the bad. Just like the first one, the supporting cast are pretty awful. The main supporting actor in this is Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's son. He's been in a bunch of movies as that sort of secondary role, and, uh, you know, he's not great. He wasn't awful, but it was a pretty mediocre, flat character. Um, and then the rest of the cast were even worse. Uh, Charlie Day, who I love from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, returns as the same character he was in the previous film. Uh, he's very over the top in this, uh, that is explained in it, but didn't do much for me. And then you have the cast of kids who are the other Jaeger pilots. And just like in the first one, like the other Jaeger pilots, they're so over the top and their dialogue is so soap opera, overly melodramatic and poorly delivered that they're just worthless characters. I didn't care about them in one way or another. There was one of them, this younger girl who sort of was befriended by um, John Boyega's character and she was okay, I guess, but really, I guess you're not going to go see this movie for exemplary acting, so I shouldn't be too hard on it for not featuring it, but yeah, it's, it's corny as hell, it's really cheesy, you don't give a shit about anyone in it, you just want to see shit blow up, monsters and special effects and robots, and that's exactly what you're going to get. So if all that ticks a box for you, then by all means go off and see it. If it doesn't, then next week I'm going to be back to review Ready Player One, which again, with no trailers, I'm very keen for. So I'll see you next week. As always, thanks for watching this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.